Good morning, and for some, good afternoon. I'm Kate Carson, Marketing Coordinator here at Tripwire, and I am really excited to welcome you all today to our webcast, Security Configuration Management for Dummies. Today, our featured speaker is Michael Thielander, Product Marketing Director at Tripwire. Michael has been managing and marketing technology products for 20 years. He's managed products for flight training, network energy, and IT security. His articles and interviews have appeared in IT Professional, CFO Magazine, SoftwareCEO.com, and many others. So today, before we start the webcast, I have a few housekeeping items I'd like to go over. First, uh, seems a little bit obvious, but we want to make sure you've got your audio turned up on your computer so you don't miss a thing. Um, if you have questions during the webcast, please use the questions button, and we are going to get to those at the Q&A portion at the end of the presentation. We'd like your feedback, so feel free to use the ratings tab um, to let us know how we've done. Um, Post-webcast, I will be sending out a link to the archived webcast, so you'll be able to listen all over and uh, share with your colleagues. Um, so today, Michael will speak for approximately 20 minutes, and then, like I said, we'll have that Q&A period. And lastly, at the end of the presentation, what a lot of you all have been waiting for, Michael will let you know how you will be getting your free Security Configuration for Dummies ebook. So um, with that, I think that's about it, and I'd like to hand it over to Michael. Here you go, Michael. Thanks very much, Kate. Again, thanks, everybody, for joining us this morning, afternoon, evening, whatever it happens to be in your time zone. As Kate said, I'm the presenter today. I'm going to try to keep this actually to about 15 minutes, and then we'll have some questions at the end of it. I may even give you a hall pass to get out early and get access to your ebook. It depends on how many questions we get you know, during the webcast. But I do want to present my... My co-presenter today, my co-presenter is actually from Wiley Publishing, the publishers and creators of the Dummies Guides. And it's probably um, a good spot to stop and talk a little bit about the whole program, about the demo, Dummies books and what they actually mean and what they provide. And then we'll talk about how we overlay that with the whole problem domain of security configuration management. And we'll get really fast to how you can get your copy of the ebook and you can start putting it to work for you. So what's a little bit about Wiley? Well, Wiley Publishing, Wiley uh, Wiley & Sons Publishing actually has been around since about 1807, and their real expertise has always been around science, academic books, media, uh, medicine books, uh, medical journals, for instance. But then about 15 years ago, they started with the Dummies programs, the Dummies series of books. Making everything easier has been the tagline for that entire series over 15 years. And it's really been a way for them to take the information that they're, uh, that's available in the marketplace and that they're so good at distilling and turn it into really concise, readable, very organized, very manageable information. So lots of book titles in print, uh, 1,600 titles, 200 million books have been in print. Uh, I can't even begin to count the number of e-books that have been av available. And then a full range of technical and general interest subjects. So if you need to know something like, how do I do public relations? I'm starting a company. How do I get kicked off with a public relations program? It can't be just about spinning. There's got to be something else to it. Or if you want to know how to do solar power your home, for instance, I want to take my house and I want to start solar powering it and get end my grid reliance and then send power back to the grid, they've got a book for that. Or if you want to look at structured query language for dummies, how do they format that in a way that um, lay people can really understand and start understanding what SQL is and how SQL is so prevalent in our lives, our websites, and what we do online and in other applications. You know, from my own personal favorite, my own library, Bass Guitar for Dummies. There you know something about me. I'm a bass guitar player. So every, every uh, domain, general interest, uh, technical areas, there's a book for. There's a book for uh, guiding you through that process and, again, kind of making everything easier for you. So how do we tie that now to this notion of security configuration management? Let's jump, in, jump into that. What is security configuration management the dummies way? What does it look like? Why do we even need to do it? I want to bring up three pieces of recent research that um, I think really illustrate for us why we need something like a dummies book to tell us how to do security configuration management, at least to give us some guidance, you know, get us started along the way. Gardner did some research about a year ago, and the paper that they wrote, the research note, was really around how to devise a server protection strategy. That's actually the name of the paper, if you want to look it up, if you have a Gartner account. Uh, just that over a year ago, this was released. And they really compared, how do I secure my servers versus how do I 
secure my desktops? What are my priorities on the server side versus on the desktop side? And at the very top of the list on the server side is security configuration management. So there's point one, a reputable analyst that's well known in the industry says security configuration management is pretty much the top of the list of the things you need to do to secure your server infrastructure. Another analyst firm called Securosis, who I love to follow with their research and their notes, did a research piece uh, uh, over a year ago, actually, but a, uh, a survey, actually, of a bunch of security practitioners in the marketplace. And the question is not theoretical, what is good to harden or secure your servers, is what has been the most effective? What is proven to be the most effective at reducing exploits in your environment and keeping data where it belongs instead of in somebody else's hands? Number two on that list was server and endpoint hardening, security configuration management. So with these two great resources saying, hey, this is one of the most important things that you can do to secure your infrastructure, here's sort of the, the, the real news. And I apologize for the size of this slide. And um, I think we'll have a, uh, some details later about how you can get copies of these slides if you like, and we can send them to you. But this is recent uh, research from the 451 group out of the Bay Area in San Francisco, another survey around information security. And it's really interesting. It finds that... Um, you know, uh, rose by any other name. They call it policy and configuration management here, but we're really talking about security configuration management, is only half deployed in the customers that really even have a plan for it. So we're at the top of this list, things like patch management, vulnerability uh, assessment, risk assessment, are broadly deployed. And at the bottom of this list, you know, unified threat management really hasn't kicked off yet. Right in the middle, a lot of people have not deployed policy and configuration man management yet. Less than half have deployed it. A good chunk of them say they want to do it, but that's that circle in the middle. They need guidance. They need some directions. They need some indications of how to get started and how to scope the project for their environment. Um, and why this is so hard is largely because it's not just technology. It's not just a product that you can actually drop into place. There's lots of pieces involved. In fact, Security configuration and management involves people, process, and technology. So how do we get our heads around a plan to develop these very complex cybersecurity processes? Uh, how do we simplify it? How do we make it explainable? And I think one of the key questions is if you're developing a plan yourself um, for your infrastructure, how do you explain the value up to senior management? And that's true of all security controls. How do I explain to somebody that I need uh, VPN SSL when they don't really understand what benefit it provides. So a lot of the issue is around how do I explain the value of this security control and put it in place? How do I give them guidance and actually get people kick-started on it? The, the, one of the issues is that of the practitioners in the field, there's a tremendous variance in experience and expertise from people that have, um, have been down this road, implemented a lot of security programs, and some that have just started and they might say, I do want to do system hardening and security configuration management. You know, where do I get started? How do I get kicked off? Well, that's where we really think the dummies guide comes into play. That's what we made security configuration management for dummies for. It's written by a very knowledgeable gentleman in the industry named Steve Piper. Steve, if you're listening, thanks very much for your authorial guidance on this book. Sponsored by Tripwire, but really just looking at best practices throughout the industry. And Steve did a tremendous amount of research looking into what is security configuration management? How do we get our arms around it? How do we manage it and control it? With the result being that what can you do? You get to reduce your attack surface. If you implement what is in this short book, you can significantly reduce your attack surface in a measurable way. Uh, obviously, achieve and maintain compliance with standards. We'll talk a little bit in this webcast about what standards. And, and more importantly, you'll learn how to scope and assess and then buy a security configuration management solution and be able to do it in a way that actually fits your budget. And it's sort of two-pronged. It fits your budget, but it also achieves what all of your goals are. So with that, I want to dive into the book a little bit. We're getting really close to your hall pass where I can let you go off and actually start downloading copies of the book if you like. I'll give you directions. But I want to tell you how, what are the pieces that are actually in it. All of the Dummies Guides from Wiley's, all, the whole series of books, have a very engaging format. So it's very readable. It's very accessible. When you look at uh, the graphics and the information, the diagrammatically, they kind of explain relatively complex concepts in an easily understandable way, in a very graphic format, a way that's pretty approachable and accessible. Uh, there's going to be graphs and there's going to be charts to show you what the output looks like. You know, what does reporting system look like? What information do I get out of it? And then how do I get to use that information? 
Um, and then everything is presented in a way that sort of represents checklists. And the nice thing about the dummies books, again, all of them, including our security configuration management for dummies, you don't have to read them from beginning to end like a novel. They're clearly not a novel. Uh, but you can go to the different chapter sections and dive into what you need to learn about today. What do I need to learn now? I already know this piece. Let me jump into looking at, you know, how do I define and scope uh, a security configuration management solution and what should I be looking for? So given that, I'm going to take a short walk through um, the table of contents, essentially, in the book and tell you what you can expect in it. Um, and I'm not going to read any of the book. Uh, there's some people that are really good at reading books online, like Garrison Keillor, and I'm not one of those. So we're really just going to talk about what are the chapter headings and what, what do you see in each one of these pieces. So at the very beginning, understanding what security configuration management is all about. The real important key in this section is uh, security configuration management goes under many, many different names. Policy management. In fact, if you look at SC Magazine's review of security controls and vendors, they never do it under security configuration management. It's always policy management. Policy management is the large category that they put that under. Uh, very often it's sort of conflated with and connected to ITGRC, but it's not really ITGRC, and we'll talk about what those differences are. Or sometimes, especially if you're from the network side, it's called configuration auditing, because that's a specific label that attaches to uh, the way that we do SEM, particularly around the network device side of things. Or it's called configuration assessment. Sometimes it's just treated that way as a feature of something like vulnerability assessment. Well, we're going to argue in this webcast, and I think the book makes a good argument, too, that you, you can see aspects of it as a feature of other solutions, but really SCM is a solution in its own right. In this first section, you'll talk about, you know, what does SCM buyers look like and what are they looking for, why file integrity monitoring is really important and critical to an SCM solution, and then the brains of really all security controls really come down to the policy, the content. There is no, or I should say very few, security controls that are all application and hardware alone. It's a lot of the content that tells it what's good, what's bad, what's acceptable, and what's unacceptable in terms of monitoring your systems. Um, I really like the second chapter where we outline kind of what are the basic SCM features. You know, you've got to have a policy library. What does a system baselining really mean and what do you get out of it? What do reports look like? But also advanced features. As you start defining, okay, basic features, give me a good background, a good foundation for how to build an SCM project, but advanced features really define it. It, it. it becomes the point of how do I start reducing risk in a manageable way that I can show to our senior executives or our boards. Those are all in the advanced features. So we start talking about doing remediation. We start talking about environments that have multi-policy requirements. Um, a great example of that is, is healthcare. I'll touch on that in just a little bit. But there's increasingly a large number of organizations that have to comply with multiple policies, multiple regulations and governance standards. Well, how do you manage that? And how can you get your SCM solution to help you manage that in a way that really doesn't suck the will to live right out of you if you're subjected to audits on an almost constant and ongoing basis? Um, Chapter 3 in this book is really all about reducing your network's attack surface. And two really important principles that I think are illustrated very well, and Steve did a very good job of illustrating in the book, security frameworks and how they're different from policies. Two of The two are very, very important in the context of security configuration management. But a framework, you know, gives you a, a, a way to look at what your overall security program is going to be without necessarily defining what the values should be. You know, what, what is the definition of secure? In a, in a sense, it's how I achieve my security goals rather than what those goals specifically are. All of the key, uh, I should say all, a number of the key frameworks are actually discussed in the book in a fair amount of detail, but there's also a lot of detail on the other piece of that, which is regulatory compliance. So when I get down to actual policies, uh, PCI, which is uh, been really driving a lot of our industry, the security industry, information security industry for really the last 10 years have been driven strongly by PCI DSS, but emerging ones as well, Health Insurance uh, Portability and Accountability Act. HIPAA is, uh, since the passage of the omnibus bill that significantly strengthened HIPAA and HITECH um, just this last month, actually it's not over, this month isn't over yet, it's been literally this month. Um, a lot of information in the news, and there's a specific need in HIPAA policies also for managing the integrity of systems and managing the integrity of configurations within those systems as a way of safeguarding patient information. 
and consumer data. Uh, another one that's very um, sort of on the bubble in terms of a lot of activity is with NERC, the North American Electric Reliability Corporation. It's been through um, four versions already of their policy. There's a specific place in it for security configuration management. The big news is that with, uh, you know, forecast passage of version five of the NERC SIP requirements, uh, in April of this year is what a lot of the pundits uh, and analysts in the space are saying. It actually introduces a whole new SIP section where configuration management, security configuration management, and file integrity and system monitoring and data monitoring uh, and vulnerabilities are all put together in one area. It's the new SIP 10 section within the NERC SIP requirements. Um, what that is an indication of is how important security configuration management is becoming and how it's very compatible with existing security controls that are being broadly implemented or have been broadly implemented. Another important section in this book gets down to, you know, how do I get started? What does it mean to scope my environment and figure out what I'm going to do SCM against or on? What do I need to do it with? Uh, what hardware requirements are actually necessary? And a fair amount of this book is uh, dedicated to discussing, do I need agents? What are my agentless device scanning capabilities? How do I mix agent-based and agentless capabilities? And I won't go into a lot of the technical details here, uh, but the book does have really good information and extra resources to point you to. What are those things that do require uh, persistent agents, and what is the value of applying those there versus agentless monitoring in some of those environments? I told you that I would give you a hall pass to jump out early and actually start downloading the book. I'll mention it right now, but in a few slides we're going to show a pointer to how to get there, and we do have some more information coming. But if you were to go to tripwire.com, forward slash SCM. You can do it, but you have to multitask. Don't leave the webcast to do it. You can actually see where the download page is and get some of this information about top-level information about the book and maybe even start the download process. But again, only if you're willing to multitask. So you can uh, bear with us for a few more slides as we talk more about what the content is in the book. So one of the things that really struck me and all of the readers that have provided feedback so far is the buying criteria for SCM. So if you're not there yet and you haven't implemented a security configuration management solution or haven't transitioned high-level policies to some control method that you can actually implement and monitor those, those policies and technical standards in a continuous way, what are the buying criteria? Well, this does a very good job of breaking down the things that may or may not be important to you based on what the requirements are of your overall organization. What is your organization actually going to need to get this done and get this implemented? And then throughout the book, and one of the things we really like about Wiley's and the Dummy series, as I said before, it's very engaging, it's very readable, it's formatted in a way that lets you jump in and out wherever you want. But like all of the Dummies books, everything is presented with these key symbols, four symbols, in fact. One is the remember tip, basically, that lets you sort of pre-highlight certain paragraphs or segments or lists of information about the things that are, are critically important that you can't forget as you start thinking about doing an SCM program in your organization. There's also a tip, right? So tips that provide really practical, hands-on advice about how you can develop a better program or a better strategy, uh, how you can do your purchasing, how you can actually set up and configure your initial monitoring environment. And there's also warning indicators. These are really great tips. And as I started looking at Wiley and how the structure of the books was, was edited and put together, uh, it became obvious to me how important these really are. These are the things that if you're skimming through a book and taking notes, this is what you don't want to miss. This is when you're scoping a solution, whether it's for, um, you know, next generation firewalls, there's a Wiley book out on that right now, or whether it's on log and SIM management, or whether it's on security configuration management. These are the things that can really trip you up, and the book does a very good job of calling these highlights out. Decisions that you need to make early rather than later when they can kind of bite you. And then the last icon, the technical stuff icon. So if you got the dummies guy there, you'll see that there's technical information. And very often we implement these security programs across different members of our environment. So you might have a security architect or a policy architect or somebody that's really aligned with policy and security group um, that's setting the high-level standards or even creating a custom security policy for the entire IT infrastructure. But they might need to pull out some technical information and provide it to network operations is a great example, or very often database operations where they've got specific requirements for how do I secure my schema or my stored procedures and how do I know when uh, changes are made to those that are disadvantageous or, or, or 
potentially harmful to my overall security configuration strategy. So these are some of the guideposts that are in the book. And some of the other things that I really love about the book is context. So there's two kinds of context that you'll find in this. One is just background. This short piece in here that's in the uh, very first chapter actually talks about the evolution from CM configuration management as a technical discipline originally brought about by the United States Air Force back in the 50s, to how it eventually evolved to become one piece of it, SCM, through work done by NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, and a publication, a uh, uh, special publication, 800-128. It is literally all about security configuration management, and it takes the approach of okay, we know how to do configuration management from an operational perspective. How do we now look at those millions of lines of code and configuration items in our network and look at them from a security lens and build a program around making sure that even as our configurations and our systems evolve to do more and better stuff, that we don't lose sight of the security parameters around us and make sure that we have continually secure environments. Another thing that I really like about the book is the drop in here and there of some case studies. I think there's four or five case studies in the book that really talk about uh, different industry segments, different compliance requirements. NERC is a good example on this one, but also PCI, HIPAA, healthcare requirements, state requirements. And how does an organization get their hands around this whole notion of security configuration management across an entire enterprise and get that work started? So you'll find a lot of use out of the case studies, I hope, in the book as well. And then at the end of the day, we're just about done. Actually, I went just a little over the 20 minutes that we promised you, but uh, this is what you'll achieve. So NIST defines security configuration and management, and I encourage you to, if you're engaged in the book and you like what the, the security configuration management for dummies provides you, go download NIST special publication 800-128. It's a great deal more uh, technical and more intense and more in-depth. However, it does a very good job of breaking down what the needs are and definitions, but they call it management control of configurations for information systems with the express goal of enabling security and managing risk. So that's the, that's their their perspective of it from NIST. What do you get out of it if you achieve this process in your environment? You get continually hardened IT systems, automated hardening in IT systems, and that makes them overall less vulnerable, more trustworthy um, when in terms of protecting your environment, and not just the systems themselves, but the important data that's on there. Everybody has their crown jewels, whether it's customer information or financial information, uh, historical information. That information is now expressed in terms of data. SCM is one of the best ways to ensure that the containers that hold that data are continually hardened at all times. So I think as we wrap this up, this is the place to go, tripwire.com slash SCM. You get a free copy of the download. Uh, you can just download the PDF right from that point. Actually, get a link. We'll get sent to you for a unique download of that PDF, uh, and then you can start reading it, start learning it, and start actually putting some of that to work. So, we have some time left over, um, and I think we're going to go through a couple of the questions right now. We pulled in a lot of questions during this webcast already, but I'll let Kate take the first run at those. Yes, we do have quite a few questions. We'll take a few. Um, the first one is: Tell me more about NERC requirements for SCM. Okay, that's a, a really good question. And as I mentioned in the webcast, a lot is happening on the NERC front. And the, the new arrival, there's a new inclusion of NERC SIP number 10. The SIPs with version 4 of the NERC requirements only went through 9. And the, the new addition of 10 is, I think, very telling for the importance of security configuration management as a mature discipline in security organizations. Um, I can tell you more about it. Uh, and the specific details are they now provide more prescriptive guidance around how to configure those systems and what a configured and hardened state looks like. And more importantly, I think they line up the um, uh, they line up the need for security configuration management also with vulnerability assessment as well. And because the two tend to speak the same language in terms of interpreting risk and looking at mitigation strategies. So hopefully that answered your question. And I will say, uh, if anybody has a follow-on question, be happy to answer them by email. My email is mclander at tripwire.com. I think we'll touch on that again. But um, we do have a lot of questions, so we'll try to pile through a couple of them here. Uh, next question. Is security configuration management really policy management or GRC? So uh, again, that's a good question. I think the, the book does a really good job of 
talking about how security configuration management goes under another couple of different names. And again, I think I mentioned this in the webcast. If you look at, if you're a reader of FC Magazine, and I am, I think it's a very sort of center of the market, good publication uh, for security and compliance management. Uh, they'll call it policy management. If you want to look at the SC Magazine review of vendors, um, I think they do it every June or July when, as they go through their periodic review of solutions. They would call it policy management in that. Uh, I would not call it ITGRC because security configuration management is a very technical set of controls. And there are a lot of pieces in ITGRC that are more around um, personnel controls, attestation, you know, a sign-off that I've accepted these particular criteria or the acceptable use policy. And SCM, uh, while there's a significant amount of overlap, doesn't do that. If you're an IT uh, security planner or implementer in the field, you're going to treat SCM as one of the controls that you actually, um, when you actually implement your solution. Okay, any more, right. Uh One more here. Um, how much does it cost to get started? It's kind of like going to college. It's all that you have. No. Um, it, I think that uh, security configuration management gives you an opportunity to start relatively small. If you've gone through the exercise of assessing risk in your environment and you know which assets are the most critical, security configuration management gives you an opportunity to harden just those assets around that system. So unlike... Um, solutions that really require the entire umbrella to be thrown over. Um, I'll use vulnerability management as an example because there's no partials in vulnerability management. You really have to do the entire environment for both active and passive scanning. Security configuration management does let you get a toehold in your environment. And if you've got a data center or even uh, PCI is a great example. They've already defined in, in PCI what the in-scope uh, assets are. Do security configuration management against those. And actually at PCI section two, asks you to do those. Um, and so I'm going to pick up another, how do you quantify the security risk is a question that came through. Thank you for asking, asking the question. It's extraordinarily hard to quantify security risk. Um, one of the ways that you can do it is you can look at the confidentiality of the information that's on that asset, sort of the typical CIA spectrum, the integrity or the shift in integrity of that asset and availability. What is that asset actually connected to? Um, I uh, sort of promised myself and you guys that I wouldn't turn this into a pitch for Tripwire Enterprise, but Tripwire Enterprise is a solution that does SCM does a really good job of helping you starting to quantify risk. We can help you tag assets for, and the book actually talks a little bit about tagging assets to things like what is critical information or what has, uh, what is accessible to other parts of the infrastructure. So that's a really good question. Um, Another good question that popped up here, uh, top three issues and concerns when planning and deploying the SCM. Um, I wish I could be really specific about this, but I think the first issue is going to be making sure that you have top-down buy-in to the need to harden those systems. Security configuration management, if you think about it, runs very contrary, contrary to operational management. SCM wants to harden systems, uh, and it's this continual balance between Productivity and then safety or security of those systems and the hardening of those. Um, that's really the key to it. And if you have an effective balance between those those two solutions, that's going to be the key that you're going to come across. So I would say uh, issue number three, get top-down buy-in so that when you go to harden systems, you have a good argument for why there might be a potential impact or at least a manageable impact on some productivity of some systems, like uh, what systems are connected to web servers that we're actually doing things on. Uh, some other questions. And actually, I've got two questions here about um, downloading the book. So we will check that out. Somebody downloaded the book and only got halfway through the download process. When you download the book off of tripwire.com, it automatically initiates a um, email link download from the Wiley servers where the book is actually hosted. If you have that problem with it, um, please send us information. You can send an email to webmaster at tripwire.com. You can actually just send it to me at mfeelander at tripwire.com. I'll forward it to the right people to make sure that we get you a copy of that book. So I've got two questions now. We've had an issue, I think, getting the, the book itself downloaded on it. So let me know if anything else comes up with that, and I will test it again as soon as we as soon as we um, get clear of this webcast. There's one more question that I want to answer while we've got about four seconds left in our allotted time. As hardening standards change, how do I keep up? How do I know the standards have been updated? Um, thank you, whoever that 
was that asked that question, it's hugely important in the overall scheme of doing a security configuration management system because they will change. The, the, uh, for instance, PCI has become continually more prescriptive as is HIPAA over the last couple of years down to the point of changing what those configuration hardening standards are. CIS used to say, uh, thou shalt have or must have a Center for Internet Security, which is a great policy source. Used to say, thou shalt have an eight-character password to consider it to be strong. They're now considering 11-character passwords or in a uh, more restricted or higher risk environment, 11-character passwords with complex alphanumeric combinations in it. That's a really simple example of the problem of these, these configuration settings, these security settings keep actually evolving over time. Make sure, and this is also expressed in the book, that you implement or you buy and implement a SCM solution that helps you evolve policy content. It's one of the key issues as you look at buying criteria, the ability to upgrade your policy content with a, well, effectively blowing up your entire SCM program. So I think we're, we've gone through our time. Mm -hmm. Kate, I'm going to let you close it up if you've got anything else. And by all means, as I said, mthelander at tripwire.com to send me any questions that you might have. Thanks very much, everybody. Yes, thank you, Michael. And we want to thank everyone for tuning in today. Um, we hope you found the presentation informative and interesting. If you have any issues, again, um, email Michael or me, Kay Carson, at Tripwire. Um, I'm excited to read the book. I've, I'm reading Wine for Dummies right now and Webcast for Dummies, so I'm trying not to mix up the two. But um, any issues, let us know. And we hope that you'll join us on our next, web, next webcast. Feel free to check our website for upcoming webcasts. I'll be sending out an archived version of this a little bit later today. Thank you, and have a great day.